In this video, I'm just going to run through Lab 3, which is, concerns itself with computer architecture, users, files, and processes. So we are going to, again, run the bash uh, container, which I have running here already. And if we do a PWD, let's just change to the slash directory, which is the root, and PWD, then we get the root directory of the file system. Now, if I do an ls space minus al, and from the first video we covered this, and that's ls for list files, minus al uh, basically shows hidden files, and on Linux, the hidden file is anything that is starts with a, a dot, full stop, or period, and l is long listing. So if we do that, we get the entire file system. Now in the lab sheet, I go through what each of these different directories are responsible for, and it's a good idea to just run through that. And the ones that we really concern ourselves with are things like the slash home directory, whereas users directories are located. There is also a slash root directory, which is the home user for the user root. Slash opt contains optional add-on applications, and that's where I put uh, things in other labs and there's a couple of others as well so if we now go down here and we go to slash root so CD that's change directory to slash root and go there um, and let's just do an alas and we've got a file.txt flag.txt and ping sweep so those are um, used for other uh, things that we're not really concerned with at the moment. But I've got a file.txt there from a previous video. So let's just remove that. To delete a file, we use the rm command. Remove a file. I can press tab and that auto-completes and I remove it. Now, now that I've got ls, I've only got the two files there. So I can touch, following the instructions in the lab sheet, file.txt to ls, and we've got file.txt, flag.txt, and ping sweep.txt. If I want to copy file.txt to file2.txt, I use the cp command, which is copy, and I do ls, and you can see that I have the two files, file.txt and file2.txt. I can move it, which is the same as a rename, uh, essentially, uh, so if I move file.txt to file3.txt, um, I would see that now we've only got file2 and file3 there. File.txt has been removed. Finally, we can remove those file2.txt and in fact file3.txt and we've now got just the original flag.txt and ping sweep.csh. Now, we can use the find command to find files. So the format for that is find where you want to start your search from, and we're going to start from the root, which is slash, and then the name of the file you, you want to search for. So let's just try and search for the, the actual program ls and we find that it's in user bin ls. If we try a different thing, uh, find slash minus name host, and then wildcard, which means that it will basically match anything with host, starting with, with host, and then anything that follows. And we do that. We get a series of files that get returned. So anything host name here, host map, etc host conf all of those match and they return the full paths to that now hidden attributes if i could do an ls minus al we can see that there are a series of files here that start with the full stop or period so the dot bash rc um, contains some uh, configuration information for the bash script uh, .vim info is to do with vim and um, various other things that are in there 
So normally if you do an LS, those are hidden. If you do an LS minus AL, that will show you all of them as well. The point of the dot is to keep it hidden and out of the way. It's not to hide it completely, but just to keep it out of the way. So let's turn to the question. We're asked to, in the root directory, slash root directory, so let's see where we are. We're in slash root, so that's okay. We're going to create a directory called sits1003. So we can use the make dir command and pass it sits1003. So we do that, and if we do an ls now, we can see that we have a purple colored sits1003. In that directory, create a subdirectory called lab3. So we let's go into sits1003 and do the operation again, and lab3. And let's go into lab3. Um, if we do a print working directory, we can see that the full path of this directory is root sits1003 lab3. So we're asked now to fetch um, this file using the command wget. So let's just copy that from here. Let's copy. So you can just highlight this and copy. And let's just paste that in. We can right click and paste and then do a wget. So now if I do an ls, I can see that I have master.zip in this directory. So to that's a compressed file, so to uncompress it, we can use unzip, master.zip, and uncompress it. Now, if we do an ls, you can see that we have the original zip file, but we also have another directory, opentrace-master. Um, how do I know that's directory? Well, the color gives it away, but if we do ls minus al, we can see here that there's a D um, at the start here, which indicates that opentrace master is a directory. You see master zip is a file, and that doesn't have anything that just has a dash at the beginning. So there's the directories. Um, this is a dot, by the way, and dots represent the current directory, and two dots represent the directory above the parent directory. So we can use those that notation to locate um, things uh, to move between ourselves and the parent directory, for example, or to specify we're talking about the, the current directory. Okay, so unzip the file, we've done that. Rename the directory that was created to open trace. So we can use the move command for that, open trace. And we're going to rename it to open trace. And if I do an ls now, we can see that the directory is open trace. And we're then asked to use the find command to look for the file app delegate.swift. So we can use find. And instead of putting the root directory, what we want to do is actually search this directory open trace, which is in the current working directory. So we say find current working directory um, forward slash open trace and then the argument for the name of the file that we want to look for. And there we go, that's the path there. So bear in mind that, sorry, we are in this directory and where we have found um, appdelegate.swift is in that directory. So what we actually want is the full path, which is root sits1003 lab3 forward slash, slash and then open trace and then open trace and that is the full path of where this file is but without specifying the last slash and the full file. Okay, so that is question one. We then move on to some commands to do with the processes. And here it introduces um, the ps command, which lists um, what running processes there are, and also ps tree. So if we do the ps command, so we do ps minus af, we get 
the listing here. And we can see the first process is run by root. It's got a process ID of one. This is the parent process. This is the process that started this one. And so you can see that there is a hierarchical relationship between you know, the parent process, the process ID, and we are running this and it's got a process ID of one, but we ran the PS command and you can see it, it's given a process ID and its parent is just the bash shell that we're running in. So we can actually run PS tree and that shows the uh, relationship but hierarchically. And so you can see that the PS tree command itself has a process ID of 180 and its parent is the bash shell that we're running in, which is process ID 1. So um, what we're actually asked to do is look at the state of the process. So and we've given this file that actually contains that information and it asks for the process ID. So enter the description of the state of the process and this is the the bash process that we're running. So the bash process is this one. We know that the process ID here is one. So to find out information about that process, we can just do cat slash proc slash one for the process ID status. And it will return a lot of information. And you can go through there um, and find something that says what is the state and then enter that in for your flag. So fairly simple um, to do that. So um, good idea to have a look uh, a bit more about who am I and ID about groups, etc. Um, and looking at the, the password file um, using the cat command. So if we do cat, slash etc password you'll see that these are a list of all of the users uh, that are on the system so then we go on to asking for file permissions and then finally we're asked to run the flag so that's in a directory cd opt lab 3 now if we do an ls minus al here we can see that there's a program or a binary file called show flag now, if we look at the permissions over and from the lectures, you remember I mentioned that that these permissions equate to the permissions that the user has, the permission that the group has, which is root as well, and the permission that everybody else has. So um, the user root can read and write to this file, uh, but everybody else, including the group, can only read now it's missing something. If we try and run this, and normally the way to run an application is to do to say exactly where it is. So we're going to say dot slash show flag and then run it. We can say permission is denied. So you can't run it that way. You have to set the execute permission on this binary. So we can use the change mod or change mode um, command, which is chmod, it's called. And then we can specify we want to change that for the user. So we type in a U and we're going to add the permission of execute to it. And then we say what we're going to add the permission to, which is show flag. So if we do that and then do LLS minus AL, you can see now that the permission has got the X in it, which is um, show flag. And it's actually changed color slightly. It's gone a little bit bold. You can see which shows that it's an actual executable, something that will run. Now, again, we can't just put show flag because it can't find the, the binary. And that's because um, they, it, the system uses um, a variable called path to search for binaries. And if we echo that variable, it's called an environment variable. These are the places where it will look to find this binary. So to run it, we can actually just do, um, say it's in the current directory, and this is where it is, and that will run OK. Or if you wanted to um, do something slightly different, you could do um, export path equals 
and then let's just say we want the current directory to be always searched for binaries um, that we want to run and then we put a colon and then we put uh, forward and then the rest of the path like that and let's just see if that now if we echo dollar path we'll see that it will actually now find that file so um, if I now just type show flag and run it that will run um, so I won't do that so that just encourage you to actually do that yourself so it's reasonably easy um, it gives you a again a whirlwind tour of some of the aspects of processes uh, file systems and uh, manipulating those files thanks and we'll move on to the next video which is about computer networking